Welcome to the first uh, PowerPoint presentation on the blood unit. Uh, first, we'll start off with uh, the different types of cells and other structures in blood. Well, first of all, blood is mostly a liquid called plasma, and the cells and things you find in it are, are called formed elements. And there's three basic groups of those. There's leukocytes or white blood cells, erythrocytes or red blood cells. That's what you think of probably when you think of blood. And then thrombocytes or platelets. Blood has a lot more functions than just carrying oxygen, as you can see, and uh, I haven't included uh, them all. So we'll move on here to the next slide, I hope. Should work. And there it is. Uh, we'll go in order from most common to least common, and we'll start with, with uh, leukocytes. Uh, red blood cells are far more common, but we'll just deal with the leukocytes first. So these are the white blood cells. Neutrophils are the most common, and uh, there's a little mnemonic that I have that goes, uh, never let monkeys eat bananas, and that will give you the first letters of all of the leukocytes in order from most common to least common. If you want to just remember the ones that are called granulocytes, that's those that have uh, granular uh, structures within their cytoplasm that stain, and you can see them like that under a microscope. If you just want to remember the granulocytes, it's never eat bananas. And if you want to remember the agranulocytes, uh, it's just let monkeys. But in any case, never let monkeys eat bananas is all of them in order. And I've listed kind of a rough estimate of all of the <clears throat> percentages that these guys exist in your blood. And these are just kind of rough numbers. Anyway, neutrophils are the most common. They're big phagocytes. They can kill bacteria and fungi other ways as well. But generally, they're considered sort of a major phagocyte. Uh, as I mentioned, they're a granulocyte, and they have a, another nickname there called polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Cat! My cat is meowing. Uh, you can see that the term polymorphonuclear uh, pretty much means that the nuclei are all different shapes, and you can see that from these images. Uh, lymphocytes, the second most common, about 30%. These are big immune system cells. So. When you hear about your immune response or immunity to a, a virus, let's say, that's kind of in the news these days, uh, your lymphocytes would be responsible for that. You can build up an immunity to um, venom. You can build up an immunity to iocane powder if you're uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts and uh, so on. So your lymphocytes, which are also called T and B cells, you may have heard those terms before. They'll be dealt with in detail in a later chapter. Uh, one of their special functions is that those are the cells that are empowered to kill your virus and uh, cancer-infected cells. All right, third, monocytes. These are really big cells. You can see by the comparison there between the uh, monocyte and an erythrocyte. Uh, it's much larger. It's bigger than even neutrophils. Uh, and they have this characteristic a uh, kidney bean-shaped nucleus. Let's see if I can draw on the fly here. So there it is. There's the kidney bean-shaped nucleus. Uh, doesn't always look like that. It sometimes it look like a big blob. But it's if you see a big cell with kind of a, you know, two-lobed or almost like one big giant lobe of a nucleus, not necessarily a circle. It's going to look kind of deformed like this then you're probably dealing with a uh, with a, uh, uh, a monocyte. Moving on to leukocytes. Oh, shoot, I should go back. Sorry, monocytes. Monocytes are big phagocytes. These guys, when they exit your blood, they're called macrophages. You might hear them called dendritic cells. They get a bunch of different names, alveolar macrophage. Uh, but these are your... These are pretty much monotaskers in that they, they phagocytize. Now, they do produce some other chemicals as a, as a byproduct, but all cells will do that. All right, let's go to the eosinophils. Now, that's kind of a mouthful, but it rolls off the tongue real easy if you practice it. Eosinophil. Uh, if you can pronounce it, you can probably spell it. Not that you'll have to online. But uh, these are phagocytes also, and they've got a really interesting job here in that they lyse or burst parasitic worms. They'll produce chemicals which will cause uh, multicellular parasites to pop. And you might think, well, big deal. I don't have those. Ha, yes, you do. 
So normally you're not laden with them, but uh, you've acquired parasitic worms over the course of your life, and if they're in your intestines or uh, even in your bloodstream, they can be uh, fought, fought by these eosinophils. Uh, you notice that they're really red. So if you see a guy that looks kind of like a neutrophil, I mean, not really, the nucleus is quite a bit different, but if you see this noticeable dark red color, and I've put a neutrophil there for comparison on the right side, then you know you're looking at an eosinophil. The last leukocyte is, are what are called basophils, the least common, they're like 1% or less. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> they, uh, their main job is to produce histamine and heparin. Now histamine you've heard of uh, with regards to antihistamine, right? If you get an allergic reaction or something, you're gonna produce too much histamine. That's, these guys are largely doing that uh, to you. Now, you like the inflammatory response if it's a response to like a, an injury or cut, you know, or even if I got stung by a bee, I'm not allergic, I would have a localized inflammatory response. But when um, mountain cedar pollen comes through every year, my basophils punish me. Uh, heparin is another molecule they produce, and this is a uh, anticoagulant. So what you want to do is get a lot of blood to an area, thus the infl inflammation and histamine, and you don't want... Uh, there to be clotting problems getting the blood there. Uh, all right, that's enough of the leukocytes. Let's move on to the most common blood cells overall, and those are uh, red blood cells, and they carry oxygen primarily. We're all well aware of that function, but they can also carry CO2 and some other stuff. They do other jobs. I call them anucleate bags of hemoglobin because they have a nucleus when they're developing, but that goes away and is replaced with more, with, more, uh, with more hemoglobin so they can maximize their oxygen carrying. <clears throat> now you see, there's a lot more disorders with blood than just anemias, but those are the ones we hear of, so I'll just mention them. Uh, you've heard of sickle cell anemia, that's a genetic disorder that is common, more common I should say, in people of uh, African descent. And the reason is that it's more common is because malaria, historically, evolutionarily, has been a, a real problem in those sorts of tropical and trop subtropical areas. It turns out that, I'm not going to get into the deep doo-doo here on this, but if you have the hetero, if you have the, the one allele, one gene for the sickle cell trait and one uh, non-sickle cell allele, you're more resistant to malaria. So that's why it's kept at a higher rate. It doesn't do you any good here in the United States uh, where there's little to no malaria, but uh, it was somewhat useful in Africa to keep you from dying from malaria. Now iron deficiency anemia is tends to be more common in women uh, due to menstruation. Uh, they, you lose iron when you lose blood and uh, if you don't have iron you can't uh, build hemoglobin correctly and you can't build hemoglobin you can't carry oxygen. Lastly are thrombocytes. Thrombocytes or platelets are these little dots. I'll try to uh, identify them here. So these little guys right there and there, those are all platelets uh, interspersed between your, uh, your erythrocytes. Um, on the right over here is a model that shows a group of platelets, those little discs forming a kind of a platelet plug. And then those wires sticking off are <clears throat> made of a protein called fibrin. And this acts like a little cork to stick in a wound. And then the fibrin mesh kind of lays over it and and solidifies the whole thing for you to be able to conduct mitosis and replace those cells. All right, that's it for the blood components. I'll have one more um, PowerPoint thing here uh, for you to look at. And other than that, please stay up with the material and uh, study the videos and photos as well.